Shalom, shalom, beloved in the Lord. Welcome once again on SOBN TV. We are live here and we want you to invite your friends wherever they are because God wants to speak to us. God is on the appointment, on the time fixed when he said he's going to be with us. So he is here with us and he wants us to be together, join in hands to give him glory and honor. I hope you'll be inviting your friends wherever they are. I hope you'll be calling your brothers and sisters wherever they are so that we can be together again for God's glory. Because it's Friday. Friday is not the time for us to be sleeping because if we remember very well before the lockdown, well, I wanted just to talk to my brothers and sisters, wherever they are, those who knows what Friday comes with. Because at the moment we are on lockdown. And we are on lockdown. Do you know how many things has been locked down on Friday? That means all youngsters who are going out on Fridays, they are on lockdown. So... They were refusing to sleep. They denied sleeping on Fridays. Every Friday for them, it was the night that they would not sleep. And then the lockdown comes. The only thing we have is to be in the house, doing chores, whatever we do, from morning to evening. Others may have work, they go to work, like key workers and the NHS stuff. So, if we look at it very clearly, instead of you being on the club on Friday, then the COVID-19 has locked you down that you shouldn't go to club anymore. You should be in the house. Sometimes I should say that I should thank COVID-19 because it has changed a lot of things in the lives of people. And now a lot of people, they have realized that God exists. Because sometimes we forget in life that God exists. Sometimes we completely forget that God exists. Do you know what? The pubs are closed. Clubs are closed where the youngsters we are going each and every Friday. They can be having work from Monday till Thursday. They work, they work hard and their whole money, which they will be using it on the clubbing and pubs and things like that. That whole money of that week, they'll spend it there. They will spend it there. And sometimes Mostly English, because I will talk about the English people because I know them very well. You know, English people on Friday, they can go out with the money they receive on that Friday morning. It goes in the bank. They put their card in the bank. They see the money is in. They will go out planning, going out clubbing all night. And when it comes in the morning, you find a gentleman, well-behaved person, having suit on him taking out his card, putting into the cash machine and the cash machine sent back the card because there is not even a penny in the card. Why? He has, used, he has used all the money he has been working from Monday till Friday. Sometimes I... I do understand them because they don't have other things to think about. They are home. But I wonder when I see we comers. When I say we comers, that means we are not originally from UK. We are not originally from England. We are just newcomers. You see they are in the same tune, dancing with the English boys. 
doing the same thing. They have family at home. They have children to take care of. They have things to do, plans to do. And they forget all those things and they jump into the, what we call the tune of the people they are surrounded with and forget about the life which they have been sent to do in this world. Do you know some other people, they come from different backgrounds and when they come into this England, there is a spirit which binds people and that spirit makes people forget where they came from. And that's why we are here so that we can remind people to know where they came from. We are comers. And if you look into the news nowadays, you see people who are new comers in China. They have been beaten up because they think they are the ones who are bringing Corona. Despite Corona was being produced by China, they are the ones who started it. But today it's like Africans are the ones who have Corona than Chinese people in China. They are tormenting our brothers. They deny them living a life. To go in the shop, they deny them that freedom. Why? Because they're in their country. But we have a lot of Chinas. We have, we have a lot of Chinese people in our countries, in Africa. Everywhere, they are everywhere. And we treat them with respect. But they don't treat us with respect. We just want to show them that we black people, we have love. Show them that we have love. Despite their tormenting our brothers and sisters. Show them that we have love. We have God in us. And maybe. What we show them. It may change them one day. To see the right thing they are doing. So. Things we are doing. Supposed to be the things which God has made it for us to do. Okay, I shouldn't take much time. I've got something to share to you because it's one of a friend of mine sent it to me because of this time we are going through. So this time I wanted just to share with you because it, it touches my heart a lot. Seeing... Somebody said, like, let us pray first before I continue. He said, Father, in, in Jesus' name, I come at your throne. I give you glory, I give you honor, I give you praise. As we are on this platform, Lord, let thy glory be manifested in this place. Let, Father, your name should be glorified in this place. I pray because of my brothers and sisters who are following me at this moment. Let you alone, oh Father, bless them wherever they are. Intervene in their situation. You know their situation. I don't know because I'm a human being with the limitation of so many things. But you, God, you create everything in your power. And I believe, oh Father, your eyes are wide, oh God, to see even the darkened place where they are. I pray in Jesus' mighty name that you're going to bless those who are asleep and bless those who are following me, that the other day they should have the opportunity, Father, to follow us again on this platform. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let me be the blessing to a certain person this night. Amen. Okay. As I said, I want to read in the book of... Um, not in the book. I just want to read something which one of my brothers sent to me. And that brother is a blessing to me. He sent something to me. So, I'm going to read with you so that you can understand exactly what that brother wanted to tell me and maybe to be also a help for you because this time we are there is so many things which is happening he said shalom jordan it's easy to lose hope we are living in unprecedented extraordinary times still waiting to see what the new normal will look like after the pandemic is over it can be tempting to give in to fear in times like this. But God 
keeps reminding me of his eternal promise in Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 6. What is Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 6 says? He says that he will never leave us nor forsake us. So that's what this brother told me. That Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 6 says that God will never leave us or forsake us because he is God of love. Even if people in the world, they have rejected you, they have forsaken you, but God in heaven will never leave you or forsake you. No matter what you do, even if you are a sinner in the eyes of people, maybe if you, people are seeing you like you are the biggest sinner of all, they already condemn you with letters, which they hold in their hands because they have your life in their hands as they declare themselves. So they come up with an idea of saying that uh, let us stop this guy to work for God because he has done this, he has done that. And then they wrote a letter to keep it in their own documentation saying that you be stopped to work for God. You will not be working for God until we open you. So we close you. We, we will open you when we need that. We want to open you. Or you need to come back to us so that you can ask for forgiveness. As we were in the time of uh, Pharisees and high priests that you should go to a high priest to ask for forgiveness. So we, we are back in those times because pastors want those things to happen now. I think that's what is happening in this world we are living. I'm telling you, I'm so shocked. I'm so disappointed in so many things which people of God are doing. Mainly pastors, bishops, evangelists, uh, uh, doctors, and many things. You know, God is God of love. When he sent his son, Jesus Christ, on earth, he came on earth for sinners not for the righteous. If you read very clearly in the Bible, he says, he came. My mission is to be with the sinners, not with the righteous. Those who look themselves as righteous, I didn't come for them because my mission is for me to come and save those who are lost. Amen. Those who are lost, that means those who are sinners, those who are counted nothing, those whom the community has rejected, those whom community has forsaken, those whom people they had they don't count upon them. That means to them they are useless. Those are the people Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, came for. And let me tell you an example of one thing. Sorry, I'm reading the message which my friend sent to me, but I'm going to be using the same message to, to exhort somebody and to exhort myself because it is touching me as well because I didn't know that this brother could send me this message at this moment because I'm really down with some other things. So many things is happening. So, in his deity, God sent his son to die for the world. To die for the sins of all of us. Because we were sinners. And because God loves us more. He sent his begotten son to die for us. And when Jesus came on earth. The first mission he did. Was to look for the disciples. That is first mission. The first thing. He wanted to get baptized. After being baptized, he went to the mountain and prayed. After praying for 40 days and 40 nights, he came down. Now, the mission was, before I start working on my vision, I have to find people to work with. 
Glory be to God. I have to find people to work with because this work, I cannot work alone. I need people to work with. Oh, glory be to God. Somebody should need a person to work with for the work of God. And God is going to send them in your way. And don't use them and dump them. Don't use them and reject them at the end. Because you have reached to the level that you wanted. And you have used them. They became useless to you. But in the eyes of God, they're not useless. God didn't even lose one. But he lost one person because the word had to be accomplished. Glory be to God. But do you know nowadays a lot of men of God, a lot of people, a lot of children of God, they use somebody and dump them at the end. They use somebody and find a reason so that they can separate with them. A lot of things is happening in this world. The word of God has been manipulated with so many things, with jealousy, with hypocrisy, with pride, with me, I know, I know, I know. You cannot teach me, you cannot do this and this and this, but the Bible is there. The book of the law is there. You should meditate day and night. What is the word of God tells you? Because the word of God is always clear. And when it says something, it says it all because you shouldn't re remove some of the words. You have to take it, all of it. If it says don't sin, don't sin. If it says don't steal, don't steal. If it says don't fornicate, don't fornicate. If it says don't do this, don't do that. Because that's the Bible. Do this, then you do that. Do this, then you do that. Don't do this, don't do it. Because it's the word of God. It's not your word. It's not my word. And when I'm talking to you about the word of God, if you are really a child of God, you got to listen because that's God speaking to you. Because when I'm using the word of God here, when I'm reading according to the word of God, I'm not taking anything from my mouth, but I'm telling you about God's word. You need to know that the person who is speaking is not me, but it's God himself speaking to you. Last time I spoke about people lose things of God because they don't like the methods God is using. They don't like the system God is using. Um, a lot of people, they have missed God. I spoke about this last time. I don't know when, but I spoke about this. A lot of people are missing God because they don't like the methods God is using. So, Jesus had to look for disciples to work with. Because he knew that, I am here, I've got all the power. I've got everything, I can do it alone. But I need people. And when he went, he didn't look for the people who were educated. He didn't look for the people who were foolish. He didn't look for the people who were stupid, but he mixed. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I'm starting enjoying this. My brothers, let me tell you one thing. You see the love of God. The love of God takes everybody. Doesn't choose. Doesn't look who are you, where are you coming from, what background you have, and so many things like that. He takes everybody as the way they are. And he started polishing them and made them what he wants them to be. When he took Peter, Peter was a fisherman. A fisher who was going out every morning or maybe at night to go and fish fish and then comes out and feed his family. But at that day, God changes the story of this man. Says that from now on, you are going to be the fisher of men, not a fisherman. Glory be to God. Listen to this sentence. He is not going to be any more a fisher man, but he's going to be a fisher of men. Are we together? So somebody who was fishing fish, he was being called fisherman, as today we call them fisherman. But Jesus, when he came, he changed this, the name of this guy from being a fisherman to become a fisher of men. So instead of going to fish, fish, he is going to start fishing men. So if you were bound, him is going to come to fish you out of there. If you are in chains, what he's going to do is to come and remove you from that chains and take you out. That's the, what, that's the way God gave him. 
to be fishing men out of the problems, to be fishing men out of the situation which is bad, to be fishing men out of sickness, to be fishing men out of trouble, to be fishing men out of situation which they cannot fish themselves out. That's what God gave the work to Peter. That's the way God gave to Peter. Peter became a fisher of men. The person who didn't go to theology college, who didn't go to school, you know the fishermen I'm talking about. Because if you go to your village, you see fish, fishermen who goes to fish at night during the day they didn't go to school. So these people, that's where God went. Jesus went and picked one of them. And if you look into the, the disciples of Christ, they were a mixture of people. They were tax collectors. Glory be to God. The people who were counted most sinners. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. They were scholars, people who went to school. Why? Because he wanted to mix all of it to show you that in God's work, there is no education. In God's work, there is anointing of God. In God's work, there is no a child. In God's work, there is anointed people of God. And when God's anoint even a child, that child has power to tell you something because he is anointed of God. He is the one God has anointed and is the one who is supposed to be telling you what to do because God has anointed him. And if you are a child of God, a real child of God, you will listen when God speaks to even a child. Because that child is the anointed one. Glory be to God. But do you know nowadays, even a child is speaking to you the word of God. And you understand this is the word of God because it's a child you want to respect. Why should I respect you when you are out of the word of God? You are a man of God. You call yourself a man of God. And you are doing things against the word of God. And you don't want to be corrected. Because you are a grown-up person, because you are 70 years old, because you are older than whatever you think you are. So, the only thing I want to tell you today is, please, I want those who want to call, they call to ask for a prayer, or maybe to ask for an answer which they want to receive an answer, a question which they want to receive an answer, somewhere they didn't understand. That's the thing I want you to, ask, to, to call about. Or maybe if you want to add something which it will educate other people. Don't just call, because when you are calling like that, sometimes it disturbs. So when you call, call. For the reason of saying that you want to ask something and you want to have an answer. Or maybe you want a prayer request and we can pray for you. That's the reason. I'm going to repeat that in another language. Si vous voulez appeler, il faut appeler si vous avez quelque chose pour... Je peux prier pour toi. Ou bien, tu as les questions pour demander et puis je vais donner les réponses. Mais... Pas appeler pour écouter le message. Non. Si vous avez, vous, 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 vous voulez écouter le message, le message, il faut abonner à la page de Christian Brethren Center et puis vous voulez suivre très bien. Il ne faut pas appeler pour, pour suivre le message. Parce que si vous avez le Facebook, il faut à suivre à la Facebook. J'espère que j'ai parlé à quelqu'un. Quoi qu'il soit, il est. Kama unataka kuita kwenye namba, inabidi unaita kwenye namba kama unatafuta maombi ya ya upekee au unabidi tunaanza kukuombea au kwa kwenye live tunakuombea au unaulizo ambao unataka kuuliza tutakupajibu katika jina la Yesu. Na kuita kwa kusema uite kwa kusema usikie neno la Mungu, usiite kwa kusikia neno la Mungu, uende kwenye page. Usiende kwenye page, uende kwenye page Facebook yako utaona kuna message walikutumia kwamba tuko live wakati walikutumia ile message tuko live apuye sir la sir ça uta utakuwa live na si utaanza kutufata kwa kusema ufate kwenye call unaita kusema ufate kwenye call hapa ni call ile namba tunaweka pale ni kusema uite kwa maombi ya special prayers i think i'm talking to someone 
So please, if you want to call, call for the prayer. If you want to call, call. You have an, an, a question and you want, you want an answer and then we can help you through. Please, please, may God bless you. So, I will continue. Then my, that brother of mine sent me this text. He says, yes, these are extraordinary times. But I think God is trying to teach us something big. The coronavirus crisis is forcing all of us to pause and reflect on the things that truly matters most. Before the pandemic, we always had so many excuses. Some of them very valid. Yes, they were very valid according to so many people. I am too busy right now. When I have time, I will call my aging relative. When I have time, I will volunteer at my local church or synagogue. The COVID-19 pandemic has taken so much away from us. But what it has given us is time. Most of us have more time than ever to look inside ourselves and listen once again to the still small voice of God calling us to extraordinary. Glory be to God. Do you know what it takes to be extraordinary? This is one that friend of mine who sent this to me. He says, what, what takes to be extraordinary is God. When God is at the center of your life, he takes the ordinary and makes it extraordinary. I'll repeat that. When God is at the center, he takes the ordinary and makes it extraordinary. Suddenly, calling your urging relatives isn't ordinary. It's a divine appointment from God. Volunteering in your community isn't ordinary. It's his word coming alive through you. Jordan, I am confident that together we will answer God's call to be extraordinary in this extraordinary time. Won't you pray with me and ask God to reveal the lessons he is trying to teach you? Now, instead of saying teach you, why don't you just put on self that, won't you pray with us and ask God to reveal the lesson he is trying to teach us? And please don't keep it to yourself. That's why I had to pass it here because he told me here, don't keep it to yourself. I would love to hear what God is revealing to you today. This is our chance to ask ourselves, what life? That's what is written on the screen there. What life will you choose after? Glory be to God. What life will we choose when this is all over, we can either go back to the same old, same old, or we can embark on the extraordinary journey God has said before us. I don't know about you, Jordan, but I'm excited for what on the horizon. Let's be extraordinary together with blessings from your friend, Yao XT. That's what my brother sent me this. And it's a lesson which is very, very important to our lives because sometimes we forget exactly where we are coming from and where we are going. Because the time people didn't had, God has given us. And that time is for us to go into ourselves and understand exactly what God really wants with our lives. We have spent our time working for the devil without knowing. We have spent our time expanding the camp of the devil without knowing. We have spent our time glorifying the devil without knowing. We have spent our entire life 
just to do our own things. Or maybe to just replenish our own lives. Or maybe to, to, to satisfy our only flesh desires. Do you know the desires we have? We satisfy them mostly than even things of God. But this is the time that we need to go into ourselves. Looking back in the things of our lives since we started until today when the COVID comes, you realize that you have not achieved anything on everything you are doing. You are just wasting your life or wasting your time for nothing. But this is the time that you want to listen to that inner voice, which my brother was speaking, that little small voice, which you are speaking into us. What you're doing is a sin. This is what, this is what you're doing is not good. There is a fighting voices in us, which sometimes the devil usually wins. People listen to the harder voice than the, that small voice which is the Holy Spirit speaking unto us. Because it's very humble and very polite that we don't like to listen to that. We want to listen to the harsh voice which is telling us the harder things. That's what people want to listen. And most of the time, that's why I said, you know nowadays the churches which are most full, a lot of people are going, it's the places where they're worshipping to unknown God. Why am I saying to unknown God? Because those places, you find themselves, the people there in that church, they're the same people who find, you will find them at the club at night. The same people who goes to church, they're the same people who also goes to the pub and dance. And when they come in the church, they became spiritual, anointed people. But when they go out there, they become also what they found on the place they are. And do you know what happens? When a pastor appears on that place, you find them all became saints. Whatever they were doing, they will stop it. Whatever they were doing, they will stop it. Why? Because a pastor, a man of God, has appeared. But let me remind you of what you do when you do that. Do you know what you're doing is that you're forgetting that there is somebody there who has been with you since you started when you're doing what you were doing there. He was there. He was looking at you. Even the time you were leaving your house, he was with you. The time you, you walk or you drive, whatsoever you did, the means of transport you get to the place you are going, he was with you. Until you reached there, he was with you. The pastor was not with you. Because he's a human being. He has no power. There is a person who has more power than the person you fear. But you don't fear him. That's the world who we are living. God looked into the world and see what people are living on. And see the fear of God has gone out, has departed in the people of God. The fear of God is no more in the children of God. The fear of God is no more in the children who are called by his name. Those children who are called by, by his name, they are now fearing men, mere human being. A person who can die. A person who has a breath which God gave them. That is the person people are fearing more than even God himself who created them in his own image. He has power. My sister wrote something on the first book. He said that, do you know that the blood donors, they ask blood donors to give three people, they can save lives. If you give your blood, you will save three lives. Now, they forgetting that there is somebody, his blood, only a the blood of this person, one man, saves 
the whole entire world. You and me. That man, that's the person we're supposed to fear. Because his blood saves entire entire world. Every person who are called by his name, the blood of Jesus, saves them. Whether Muslims, whether Buddhist, whether anybody. Whatever religion you may know, they were saved by this man who gave his blood. So this man is the person we have to fear. He says in our lives for us to be, to, re, to be out from the ordinary and become extraordinary, it needs God. It's only God. So just look at your, yourself. Look in your life. And now because God has given you that time for you to have a time, stay at home, meditate, look into your life. Put it down into a paper. Write from the beginning of your life till today when the COVID started. And see what the achievement you have done on things you were doing. With the things of God. Will you go back to the same life you had before or you will change? What life will you choose after this COVID? What life will you choose after this pandemic goes? What life will you choose after this crisis gone? Will you go back to the life of drinking? Would you go back to the life of smoking? Would you go back to the life of clubbing? Would you go back to the life of smoking hemp? Would you go to the life of doing sees each and every day? Would you go to the life of lying to people about God but you are not following God? Would you lie, you do go back to the, to to, to the same life of not preaching the word of God, but lying to people about being enrichment or maybe being blessed. This is not the time for us to focus on other things. It's the time for us to focus what life will I choose after this. Let us go to Exodus. I want to read this verse because it's very important. We are going to read in Exodus chapter 12. Glory be to God. Exodus chapter 12 verse 23. The Bible says, For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood upon the linton and on the two sides post, the Lord will pass over the door. And you will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your house to smite you. Glory be to God. Do you know this time we are? It's the time for us to be calling upon the blood of Jesus. Because that's the blood which saves lives. And this time, it was the time of Egyptians. The children of Israel were in the captivity for so many years, for 400 years, being in captive. Suffering in the hands of Pharaoh. And God promised them that they should kill a lamb. Numbers of the household, whatever numbers they may be, they need to kill a lamb. And when they kill that lamb, they should take the blood and put in their post. When they put in their post, the other meat, they should eat it and they should not leave it till morning. Glory be to God. And then, when that... When that angel of death will pass. It shall see under the blood and that blood will be enough for that house to be saved. Glory be to God. For that house to be saved. And then, whenever they won't see any blood of that lamb, that house, the first son, even the first goat, every animal, even the even that means the flocks, human being, and anything, which has a firstborn will die. But wherever they will see the blood of this lamb, they will pass by. The angel of death will pass by. So this is not the time for us to be wasting time in doing things which are removing yourself in the presence of God. It's the time for us to focus. 
Look upon the work of the cross. Look upon the message of the cross. Look upon the work he finished at the cross of Calvary. And pray to God that God, in this life I am, I have wasted my life all this time. Now, from now onwards, until the lockdown is, is, is up, I want to see that I've changed my life. I want the life which is completely different to what I had before. Because I'm tired of the life I had before. I didn't gain anything. It was a loss in my life. But now I have realized that without you, there is nothing I can gain in this life. But with you, I may become extraordinary than an ordinary person I was before. So this is the moment. That we need to understand that God is the greatest God we serve. He is the one who can save us. He is the one who can change our life completely. He is the one who can mandate us and say that what you were doing before, it was wrong. Now this is what I want you to do. And if you follow that, your life will be successful because he is the one who has mandated you. And when he mandates you, he always follow you behind and help you in the work he has given you. Because he is the Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end, the first and the last, the one who says, I shall be with you. I will never forsake you. Glory be to God. I will never forsake you. I will never leave you alone. Even the world forsake you, but I will never leave you alone because I love you more than the people who claim they love you. Because the people who claim they love you today, tomorrow they may hate you. The people whom you are working with them to today, tomorrow they may turn back on you and say that you were a sinner and say that we have blocked you, you will never work again, this and that. Tomorrow, that's what they will do. Today, they may laugh with you. Today, they may hug you. Today, they may do anything good to you. Why? Because they have something there. But God, when he has called you, when he has mandated you, when He has, you have chose him, you said, God... This is the moment you have put me down. You have made a seat for me to sit and, and, and realize what I've done all my life. And I've reached to today and I've seen that there is nothing which I have achieved in the things I was doing before. Now this is the moment that I want to realize and say, what life will I choose after this? And I have chose you, God. That's the only choice which is the best choice. That's the only choice which can change your life completely. That's the only choice which can make you have breakthrough in your life. That's the only choice which can give you the key to open every door which is locked in your life. That is the only option which can make you to move mountains, whatever mountains may you have in front of you. That man can remove them because he, he is capable of doing it. Hallelujah. My, my, you didn't listen to that. You didn't catch that. I'm going to repeat that. I'm telling you this. At this moment, the life you had before is past. He has given you time to refresh it. He has given you time to understand it, to come down and listen to your voice inside, the inner voice of you, and understand it. It will tell you that you had failure. It will tell you that you didn't, you didn't make it. It will tell you that you were failing in many things you were doing. But now, what life will you choose? And I'm telling you that the only life you may choose, the only option which is the best option ever, it's God. Because when God has, 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 has seen that you have chosen him, he will not leave you nor forsake you. Glory be to God. He says, I will not leave you nor forsake you because I love you. I died for you. I did everything for you. Hallelujah. It's the moment that you need to make a decision. It's the moment that you need to know what comes after this. I was a drunkard. I was a clubbing person. What I was doing is this and that. I wasn't giving glory to anything I was doing to God. Everything I was doing was only glorifying the devil and his camp and all the things I was doing was only for his glory. But now I've realized because all the things I've done it's a loss. Hallelujah. 24, he says, And you shall observe these things for an ordinance to you and to your sons forever. And it shall come to pass when you be 
you be come to the land which the Lord will give you according. And he has promised that you shall keep this service. Are we together? Listen to me very clearly. This is what the promise which God is giving to the children of Israel. He's giving it to you today. What life will you choose after? If you choose God, he's going to save you in this time. No matter what the situation it is, but God is capable to save you because you have sit down and you have selected in the life you have lived since you had you had your life when God gave it to you so that you can lead it the way you want to, to lead it. But at this moment, he has taken precautions. He has put you down. He has told you to sit down and refresh. Take the blood of Jesus. Put in front of your post. Say to the world that I and my family, we shall serve the Lord. And you see what God can do. He says, and you shall observe these things for an ordinance to you and to your sons forever. So whatever you choose at this moment, you got to know that it's a covenant you're making with God. Glory be to God. When you make a covenant with God, God never breaks it. It's only the person who never breaks the covenant. It's only faithful God who never breaks the covenant. He is always behind that covenant to come to an end with it. Until you became a dead person, that covenant is still there. Because he is the God who is always behind his words. And when he blesses you, he never repent. When he says, I open this door, that door will never close. Because he is God. The pastors will promise you something he may lie tomorrow. And he may promise you today he will never give you that promise. He has promised, yes. But for him to accomplish it, he will not accomplish it because he is a, a mere human being. The person you fear most is the person who can never give you anything. The person you doesn't fear is the person who can give you the whole world. Hallelujah. And it shall come to pass when your children shall say unto you, What mean you by this service? Glory be to God. That you shall say, It is the sacrifice of the Lord Passover who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he smote of the Egyptian and delivered our houses. Hallelujah. And the people bowed the head and worshipped. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. If your child, after this life, the life you're going to choose, if you choose for God, glory be to God. I'll praise the Lord because you have chosen good. You have done a good choice. And whenever your children are asking, why are you doing this? Tell them that because the God I chose after the life I had before, when the crisis came, when the COVID-19 came, when the pandemic came, I choose God. And when I chose God, I put the blood of Jesus. I sprinkled the blood of Jesus around my house, around my children, around my family, and that they shall not die. And if God put keep them safe until the COVID-19 finish, I shall save him. And because he saved them, today I will save them with you. Whatever I'm doing now is what I pray promise God to do because he saved my life. He saved your children lives. He saved your, your uncles, your, your aunties, your brothers and sisters. Every person who is alive today, God saved them because I asked him to save them. And because I asked them to, I asked him to save them, I promise that I'm going to work for him because that's the life I choose after COVID-19. Glory be to God. And you will see if God can let you down. People may disappoint you, but God will never disappoint you. People may let you down, but God will never let you down. If you choose the best, and the best is only God, you have to choose God. You have to accept Christ because he is the only one who can change your life for good. Who can change your life for good, not for better. I didn't say better, I said for good. Maybe I can say for excellence. Because whenever he changes your life, your life changes for the better, for the, for the great. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. 
Thank you, King of King. I can see that you are starting changing the lives of people. You are, I can see that you have start changing the mind of people, showing them that they can choose only you, God, and nothing else. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because whatever you did to the children of Israel, you're going to do it today. There is some other families they are suffering at the moment. One of their members, oh Lord, have been catch COVID, oh Father. But I pray that if you save that person, oh Lord, in that family, Father, those family, they shall save you in Jesus' name. They shall glorify your name in Jesus' name. They shall glorify your name in every area they shall go. Because that's what the life they may choose after the COVID-19. That's the life they may choose after their family has been healed. Father, intervene in the name of Jesus. Because I believe in you that, God, you are capable of doing impossibilities. And I know, God, there is no impossibilities in your dictionary. There is no... I cannot do it in the, in your dictionary. There is no that there is no word of I can't in your dictionary. It's only that I can. It's only that I will do. It's only that I love you. It's only that the positive things that's the one which are in you, Lord Almighty God. Father, we thank you because you're gonna intervene in the life of one of the families. God, I pray that Father, your children shall choose you after this COVID nineteen. I pray that that family shall choose you after this COVID-19. They shall live the life they were leading before. They shall live the life of glorifying the devil in their family. They shall live the life of exalting the name of the devil in their family, in their businesses, in their churches. And they shall start glorifying your name. And they shall start preaching the message of the cross. And they shall start preaching the uh, Christ and him crucified. And because that's the message which can set people free, nothing else but the message of the cross. I pray in the name of Jesus that you shall start intervening in the life of the children of you, God. The way you intervene in the life of the children of Israel. Father, we are the descendants of Abraham. Everywhere your children are, Lord, they're descendants of Abraham. Remember the promise you promised the Abraham, your servant, God. He, he was the faithful man you had. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that, God, you will intervene in the lives of those, God, who, are cho who have chosen you. God, I believe there is so many people. They will start choosing you and live the life they had before COVID-19. And after COVID-19, Father, a lot of children will save you because they have seen your hand at work, because they have seen you at work, because they have seen you do miracle and wonders, because they have seen you heal the sick, because they have seen you have the power to break through every situation in their lives, because they have seen you have the power to break the chains of their life, because they have seen you have the power to move mountains in their lives, because they have seen you have the power to, re to release, oh my God, those who are captive, oh God, because they They've seen you, they have the power, God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Oh, glory be to God. I praise you and exalt you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And the Bible says, And the children of Israel went away and did as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron. So did, so did they. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And it came to pass that at midnight, the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. From the firstborn of Pharaoh, who sat on his throne, and to the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of Keto. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. My brothers, my sisters, God killed every firstborn of Pharaoh himself, the one who was supposed to succeed Pharaoh, he killed him. Why? Because of stubbornness. You hear the word of God. Pharaoh was hearing the word of God. He was listening when Moses was speaking to him about God. I am speaking to you about God. I am speaking to you about Jesus. You may be stubborn. In this COVID-19, it's not the time for you to be stubborn because you don't know what may come tomorrow. I repeat, God killed every firstborn of 
to the richest people in Egypt, even to the captive people who were in the dungeon, the people who had nothing. But because of the stubbornness of one person, God had to kill a lot of people, a lot of children, innocent children. Let me repeat again. Because some, sometimes people forget that God can kill innocent people, innocent children, because of the sins of some other people. Are we together? If you look these days, a lot of people are dying and some of them are innocent. God can kill innocent people because of the stubbornness of somebody, because of the sins of someone. God loves sinners. Listen to me very clearly. This is the profound word. This is a very difficult word to understand. But I want you to understand me clearly. God loves sinners. Are we together? God loves sinners. And that's why he sends his son, Jesus Christ, to die at a cross. Because he loves sinners. So you, the one who is holding the letter, you... What do we call it? The word has just run away from me. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. It's so painful to see things which is happening in churches nowadays. God loves sinners. And that's why he sends his son to die for them. But what God doesn't like it sins. He doesn't like sins. Sins. He doesn't like sin. Oh, let me say it. Let me put it in that word. God likes sinners, but he doesn't like sin. The sin itself, he doesn't like it. But he likes the sinner. And that's why he died for them. So if you are a sinner, if you accept Christ, and you, you ask for forgiveness in everything you did. God will forgive you. And you the old you will go. The old you will go. So the, whatever they called you, who you were before, that one will go, will pass. You became a new creature. You became a new creation. Old things have passed and now you became new in the eyes of God. Despite in the eyes of people and even the devil can come and uh, whispering in your ears saying that you are still a sinner. You did this and that. Don't you for, have you forgotten this and this and that? What you did that time, you did bad thing. God can never forgive you for that. God has forgiven you. The sins of the past, present and the future. That's why his son died at the cross. So whatever the, the, this small voice you heard that God has not forgiven you. That is the devil. Tell him, shut up, devil. Shut up. Because God sent his son to die for my sins. The past, present, and the future. What I have to do is to stick on the word of God and listen to God and ask and, and always confess for everything I do and never repeat again. Listen to me. Jesus died for our sins past, present, and future. What we do is when you sin and you realize it's a sin, the Spirit will tell you that this is sin. Confess it and continue. Don't repeat the same sins you have seen. Because we are children in the presence of God. We stumble every day and we fall. We walk up. We stumble. We fall. And we walk up. Like a child when he start, he's learning to walk. You stumble. The child will stumble. will fall. But you stand up again trying to walk. That's what we do in the things of God. Don't think you are mature enough that you won't be taught even by child. Don't think you are mature enough that you know everything. God loves you. What life will you choose after COVID-19? What life will you choose after lockdown? What life will you choose after 
this crisis. If God keeps you alive, what life will you choose? If God protects you, what life will you choose after? And the only advice I can give you is to choose God. The ordinary of you will pass and the extraordinary will come into your life. God bless you and have a lovely night. Refresh and think about the words God has spoken today. Amen. Hallelujah.